Good morning. How are you, everybody? Just double checking the microphone. Okay, who's here? What are you up to? Who's got knitting on their needles as we speak? Say something in the comments, let me know you're here. Because I also need to know whether you can see me and hear me. How are you doing? Okay. Um, so today, hello, Amaris is here. Kim is here. Morning, morning. Good. I'm glad you're live and you're not just these weird numbers that YouTube is showing me. <laughs> Amanda's here from West Virginia. Quarter to six in the morning, West Virginia. Isabel's here. Cara's here from the Hooting Pirates. Jackie's here. My cup of tea's here. See you later. <laughs> Mandela's here. And my own mini from 2009 is here as well. Have you got a name, my own mini? And Joe's here. Good morning, Joe. Um, lovely to have you all. Yay, T. <laughs> and Izzy. Great. So, you, if you've read the description, I'm pretty sure I wrote it in the description. We're going to go through what's in the new knitting kits. You're going to have a real good look at it all as well on Tuesday next week because I'm going to go through a whole lot on Tuesday and you're going to get real in-depth um, insight into what goes into every kit, etc, etc. But we're going to go through it all today as well. So, this is exciting. Linda's here. Diane, my own mini 2009 is Diane. Got to remember that. Um, Izzy, can't go wrong starting with a cuppa. Absolutely. And it's that time of day. 11 o'clock in the morning, my dad says it's a cup of tea time. Um, Amaris has been up since 3 o'clock in the morning. Linda, message me on Instagram. Okay, I will go and have a look at that when we finish here. First time here for Linda. Fabulous. Yes. Kaz is starting to knit from South Yorkshire and Sheffield. Cool. Nick's family is from Sheffield. Brilliant. Um, so what's on your needles? That's the important thing. What is on your needles today? At the moment, I'm very much in between. I've done all of that and I've got to start that. So I'm just getting thoughts in my head. <laughs> right, okay, what am I gonna knit next? And how's it gonna go? And what's happening? Etc. etc. et cetera. Et cetera. Um, and yarn organized and ideas brimming. So I may actually get something to just knit because I fancy knitting this weekend. Um, just, just because I feel like it. Um, but there's actually nothing on my needles. I've got a couple of things that need sewing up, but I need to do that on camera, so I'm gonna do that on camera. But yeah, that's it. I don't have anything, literally do not have anything on my needles at the moment. So, okay, Linda, oh yes, yes, yes. Hi, Linda, I know who you are now. Kim, we just, she just finished her slouchy hat. Fabulous, that was the one with four ply yarn, wasn't it? <sighs> Kaz, granny dishcloth. See, actually, Kim, I just will just say, that shows you, when you start knitting something, it feels like it's an absolute marathon, but, it's lots of little steps, lots of little paces that get you there. And we were talking about that, was it last week or the week before? And then it's now finished. And it shows you that these things, while they take time, you get to that point where you go, oh, that's an achievement factor, finished. I just love that about knitting because it just shows you that with the patience and the time and the effort, you have to pick it up and make it a priority to knit every stitch. You will reach the end of a project and you go, yes, I finished it. Yes. Kaz, granny dishcloth, I'm trying to knit myself a shawl blanket. Lovely shawl blanket. Oh, yes. 
At the moment, we need shawl blankets. Joe, still the mighty square Afghan that's going to Australia. Fabulous. Squares one at a time. Put them all together. Brilliant. Mandela is knitting socks. Needs something on larger needles now. <laughs> yes, socks can be very small. Very, very small needles. Thanks for the yoga hand exercises. They help. Oh, that's good. I actually went and did a wrist um, class with a new yoga teacher that I found. She's not a new yoga teacher, but I just found her very recently. Um, Kat Meffen. She's got a brilliant work wrist class that I did last night. Loved it. Linda, just finished a hat and socks and is starting on a batch of cotton dishcloths. Cool. Um, bubble baking bunny. I started a jumper spontaneously at midnight this morning. So chunky, only one hour I had half a back. Yeah, fabulous. Nice one. A large blanket I started last week with you that I finished. Cool. Hi there, Linda. <laughs> right. I've got to remember all these names. You're making it difficult for me. Amanda is still making the baby blanket and the daughter's Harry Potter scarf. Cool. I've been watching Knits Nottingham videos. Very exciting. My husband's been knitting loom blankets for beds. Oh, that is exciting. Loom, loom knitting. I've not really ever done that other than using French knitting dolls, which is a very, very small version of loom knitting. Make, bake, make and create says hi. Hi. Izzy, I've not got anything on my needles yet. I just need to take a look around for what's next. Maybe some little nests for Wildlife Centre. Ooh, that sounds exciting. Um, I crochet, but you're so nice I wanted to join in. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Well, tell us what's on your hook. That's fine. Um... Knitting a car seat blanket for my own grandson expected soon. That's lovely. Diane is knitting a car seat blanket. Now, some of the blankets that I've got for baby blind, baby here are ideal size for car seats. I discovered when I really started knitting more for baby 10 years ago, because my friends were in that stage of their lives, that it got to a point where we need a blanket for the car. And... I just coincidentally, I'd knitted a baby blanket and I designed a baby blanket that was the perfect size for the car. So I was being told, that's a car seat blanket. That's it. Yeah. It's a whole new phenomenon. And then to be slightly bigger, maybe if you put them in a buggy. But yeah, that's it. Joe, hate sewing. Ah! <laughs> Need to learn to pick up the stitches of the previous squares to knit it. Cool. Well done, well done. That's a, that's a great talent that you can take into other projects. Fabulous. Jackie is finishing the Missy, Mrs. Weasley jumper. Brilliant. And she's been, and bake, make, and create. I don't know your name yet. Please tell me your name. <laughs> Has been making a purse for her mum. Fabulous. So that's the crochet project. Fab. You lot are so busy. <laughs> And they all sound like fabulous projects. And it just shows you how you're knitting something and no one else is knitting the same thing. Fabulous. Love it. Oh, look at that. The car seat blanket has lots in it for straps to go through before fasting so it stays in place. What a fabulous idea. Um, yeah, I... Addy, AD. Right, bake, make and create is AD. Okay, and you are crocheting a purse for your mum. Right. Oh, Kaz is not knitting, but cooking. Okay, jerk sausage, vegetable dumplings later. And that's very creative. The, um, what I love about people who have the creativity in their lives already is that the creativity moves into other parts of their lives as well. So by being a knitter, it just shows that that creativity is just sifting and shifting into other parts of the life or you've been created somewhere else and knitting has just kind of sparked your interest and you've become a knitter because of creativity elsewhere love 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 that kim forgot to say also sewed a storage box for daughter in law fabulous you lot are so so busy 
Right, shall we go through the baby blankets? They are opening on the shop on Sunday. And if you're in the membership, then you'll have access to them earlier. I didn't want anyone in the membership to miss out um, because we'd run out of yarn or anything. So I'm hoping we won't run out of yarn. We have got quite a lot. <laughs> but if you're in the membership, you will get a peek and the opportunity to buy earlier. Right. So this is the kind of package that your um, blanket kit will come in. It will be a bigger bag if you go for the needles as well, because these are really, really long needles. <laughs> it might be in this small bag, and then the needles might be separate. Or if you opt for the smaller circular needles, then they can easily go in this bag. But they're full balls of yarn in this. You get four balls of yarn for some of the blankets and uh, three balls of yarn for the others. So that's um, that's just what it will look like when it appears. So let's take the knit along blankets. Let's have a look at them later because the knit along blankets are really important. <laughs> but so this first one is how do you become a member? knitwithhannah.co.uk forward slash invite. That's where the membership is all um, set up. So you can go and have a look at that by all means, Diane. Um, there you go. That is the squares blanket. Um, it's, uh, it feels like a beginner's. You know how much I like to make patterns that aren't so difficult you're going to tear your hair out and start crying. I like classic um, classic patterns that will last for a really long time. Um, and blanket um, pat patterns that have enough interest in them so they're not boring. That's what I like about patterns. Um, I've always been someone who will go for larger prints like this rather than really, really delicate prints. So um, this just kind of shows that off. I have the diamonds and the hearts in them. And this is one of the reasons I'm opening them up in the shop on the 14th of Sunday, the 14th of February, because I thought so much love in babies, kiss in every stitch and that is really, really shown up in this blanket. So this is a green blanket. This is eucalyptus green. It reminds me of pistachio green. It's it's really got a lovely warmth to it. So I really, really like that colour. Um, so that is the squares blanket. And this uses three, um, three balls of yarn. And it's the super cotton the shiny happy cotton from Wool and the Gang. So this is the um, first blanket. This is, I think, this is the smallest blanket. The um, knit and the pearl stitch um, are just interlaced, are uh, switched over when you're doing the squares. And then you can follow the charts or you can follow the written pattern. So it's written out in the chart form and it's written out in the written pattern form so i've done that so that anyone who's never followed a chart before can start reading the pattern um start reading the chart and make sure you got it right just by reading the written pattern as well so that is the squares blanket this cotton is so soft Love that. um the one that isn't in cotton is the one that's in recycled upcycled denim so this isn't recycled, it's upcycled. It's factory offcuts, like I was talking about last week. I love that when clothes are made, there's obviously things left over, there's fabric left over, because you can't cut out a t-shirt shape um, or a jeans shape without having leftover fabric. And that's what this is made of. This 
This is a pattern I made so many years ago, and I love it so much. It's so simple and classic and easy um, and different. Um, so that is from upcycled denim, and you can tell it's upcycled denim because of the colour. It is just, it's the denim colour. It's like a stonewashed jean. Now this, I would suggest washing before you give it to a baby, um, just because it's like a pair of jeans. It's the, um, when you wear it, when you get a new pair of jeans, it always says on the label, please be aware, do not wear this next to white colours <laughs> because the colour will run or the dye will um, shift. But that's the only thing with this, wash it before you gift it. So the colour will just um, run um, and rub over onto other fabrics. So there you go. So that is the bobble blanket. There will be um, tutorials on how to knit these bobbles coming up on the YouTube channel. So they're there and available for you um, when you're knitting this all the way through. So there you go. That is the bobble blanket. The other colour I have here of this is the mixture. This is the raw denim and a crew kind of mix. I'm not that keen on when colours mix like this, but when it's a really plain pattern, so you can really see the full effect of it, rather than it getting confused with cables or lace or anything, then I actually really like to just appreciate the, um, the yarn. So I really like that. There you go. So that's the other bubble colour. And there are... If you remember from last week, there are two other colours of this denim yarn. So there you go. So that's the bobble blanket. Let me just read your comments. They are long needles. Yes, these are 35 centimetres so that you will get all of the stitches for the blankets on them. Um, you can knit flat straight on 80 centimeter needles if you like, these are circular ones. So that's always an option. Um, but 35 centimeter, I've knitted pretty much every blanket on these. I've knitted blankets for years. Most of my blankets I've knitted on these. If it's a really long blanket, if there's a lot of stitches, then yes, you do need the circular one because it just won't fit on here. But um, they're just about a hundred stitches for those baby blankets and that will fit on this. I must say that this is um, Aran and Worsted Weight yarn. It's a medium yarn. So we're not going to knit something and go, this is going to take me months. Um, and it's also got enough weight to it um, so that the blanket, I feel, I really like a weighted blanket. <laughs> when I might as well just share something in my life. On my, on our bed, we have our duvet, and on my side of the bed, <laughs> there is a big wall blanket as well because I need the weight. I grew up um, with sheets and really heavy wool blankets, so I can't sleep without it. It just feels odd. So um, I really like the weight of a thicker yarn for a baby blanket. Um, Linda, we really need to learn to knit. I really need to learn to knit on a circular. I've awarded them for 20 years. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously you're not knitting in the round with a baby blanket. You're just knitting flat on these. But I do have the circle skills course if you want to just get the basics of knitting with circular needles going in the round and actually knitting flat circles. So, I mean, this is a crochet example, but you would knit a coaster like that. That's part of the circle skills course. So academy.co.uk, sorry, academy.knitwithhannah.co.uk is the circles and you'll find the circle skills course there. So if you ever want to learn circle knitting, then you can go and have a look at that. Lovely blanket. Thank you, Kim. Love the hearts. Yes. Took me ages to get the shape with the stitches. Ah, I had to test it a couple of few times. Oh dear. Kaz, when knitting, do you knit the knit, pearl the pearl? I can't read patterns. 
Yes. K and P is basically it. So if it's K9, P9, then it's knit nine stitches, purl nine stitches, like that. And then it might say repeat that across the row or then knit to the end of the row or something like that. So K is knit and P is purl in, in um, knitting patterns. If you want to learn more about knitting patterns, then you can have a look at the Masterful Knitter, which goes into the knitting jargon and knitting language in greater depth, and the Intuitive Knitter, which talks about reading knitting patterns more as well. So those are both courses, video courses that I've got um, at the academy.knitwithhannah.co.uk. They will take you in deeper depth into reading patterns. It's a subjects where you need to look at what you're knitting um, and look at the pattern and follow the videos as well. And all of my courses guide you through knitting the tutorials, through the tutorials with me and reading the patterns. So if you ever feel that you're really getting stuck on reading patterns and you're trying to learn new techniques or something, then go and have a look at the courses that I've got because I do not go through those courses without guiding you through the pattern at the same time. It's um, something that I find really important. You have to really kind of focus on what you're doing. If you are learning a new technique or if you're knitting something new, just, well, I've knitted, never knitted a pair of fingerless mitts in my life. I really need to focus on the pattern. It's understanding the pattern that can really help you. So that's why when I made those courses, it wasn't just follow my knitting and see me knitting at the same time, step by step. It's let's read the pattern together and knit. So Kaz, if you ever feel that's what you need, then do go and have a look at the courses. They're there for you. I'm not going to take them down at any point. You can just go and check out those. Kim made a basket weave blanket for a grandson. Cool. So that's the squares one. Fabulous. Local knitting shops shut down. Oh no. It's... Oh, it's a struggle, isn't it? The, um, I mean, in the last year, that's a real struggle. But I remember when one of our local knit, um, knitting shops, one of our local knitting shops, I'm very fortunate to have um, a, a big kind of a pop-up shop marketplace um, near us. Um, and there's lots of different shops there. Um, and one of them is a yarn shop. Um, and then there's a little yarn shop in the center of one of our local towns. And then there was one in an industrial park. She, the lady who ran it was so excited about knitting when she started, she went, right, I'm starting a knitting shop. Everything's going in there. I'm starting workshops. I'm doing everything I possibly can. And she got two knitters to help her set the thing up. And within five years, she, oh, I want another hobby. I'm not doing this anymore, I'm bored. So the shop shut down. <laughs> so, there are different reasons that shops close, but um, I know the last year has been a real struggle for people with in-person shops. So, so, so difficult. Love the denim. Yes. Yeah. To, to have it as an upcycled yarn. Love it. And the bobbles, Kaz, uh, Kim. The um, I was double checking and refiguring how I make the bubbles this time. I sat there with some samples and with the denim yarn as well and tested out different ways of making bubbles. So I got them so they're tighter and I'm much more happy with them now than when I made the original pattern. So I, I'm i sure you're going to like them. Um, it, it feels a lot better than the original pattern when I made it 12 years ago. Linda, Yes, knitting shops shutting down is really sad, yeah. Oh, that's good. Gone to online selling, yeah. I mean, it's the right time for it. And so many businesses have been just prompted to go to online selling, most definitely. <laughs> Baby's little fingers will love those bubbles. Yes, that's the feedback I've had in the past, is that it's just that little bit of interest. And I'll show you another one with a lot more interest as well. Linda, check that out later. Yes, do go and have a look at the different um, courses I've got. Are they um, are they on my website? But I just I need to talk about them more so that people understand that they're there. It's um, a big, deeper dive in those courses than you will get on here. Um, and a few weeks' time, just kind of give you a, uh, 
an inkling into exactly what we're doing in the courses. Right. Linda, only knitting shop in local market doesn't have website. Ugh, that's a shame. Love your video. You talking to me? Thank you. Thank you. Izzy, it's part of what put me off as a knitter when I can't follow or visualise the pattern. Yes, it's difficult. We used to have three knitting shops in hometown. Now we only have a sewing shop which sells knitting but not dedicated knitting. Yeah, that's one thing we've got. A, we had a shop that um, was basically a quilting shop and she started selling yarn. And then because it wasn't her speciality, she stopped selling yarn. So that was quite kind of disappointing. We, we need it. <laughs> we need that yarn. Um, and because different shops stock different brands of yarn as well and they pick different colours. So, yeah. Sharon, I'm doing a collar at the moment in rib from front bands. Oh, exciting. I am so confused with it. Oh, no. <laughs> when when someone says I'm knitting the collar, it's, you're almost finished. That's exciting. I'm so confused with it. It's laying in the corner. It's, it's on the naughty step. It's not getting the increase in turns. Oh, dear. Okay. Um, definitely go and have a look. Um, on my channel homepage, go and look in the playlist. It will help you with um, the jargons, jargon list. It will give you, um, it will give you wrap and turn on a knit row and wrap and turn on a purl row. That could be what you're looking for um, because you're doing short rows and you're increasing. That could be part of it. And I've got so many different increasing um, jargon demos in there as well. So do go and have a look at the playlist. It will be in the jargon or it will be in the increasing and decreasing jargon that you will look, be looking for. It's um, those little bits that you get, the abbreviations in a pattern that drive you mad. I'm hoping to just calm down that madness. <laughs> so I hope those videos will help you with that. Kaz is using King Cole Cherish Yarns. Fab. Linda, my closest shop is a tourist gift shop with a tiny knitting section at the back. Oh, that's interesting. Not much choice. I have to drive for an hour, over an hour to a real knitting shop. Yeah, um, a real knitting shop is about half an hour's drive from here. She's really, really good. And she set up a cafe in the back so she could do workshops there. So that's even better, which means I go and look at the wall and Nick can go and have a coffee. <laughs> you know, and he makes a really good cup of tea as well. Oh dear, right, next one. Now these next two blankets, I was so thrilled when I knitted the first one. I thought, is there enough yarn? Is there enough yarn? Is there enough yarn? And there was to knit a baby beanie with the leftovers. So I came up with this pattern. Um, so that just just thrilled me. So it's a newborn to three months size and it's about 42, 43 grams. And we have leftovers about 50. So there is enough leftovers to definitely knit this hat. It's not, oh, can you do it? Can't you do it? It's definitely, you will be able to do it. So what's the main blanket? This is the one that I mentioned that has got even more texture than the bubble one. Here we go. And there's an end there that I haven't sewn in yet. <laughs> I'll tell you more about that on Tuesday. There you go. So this is a bigger one than the others. really really long that's three and a half balls of yarn um and there's enough left over to knit the hat so that's in cotton again this is the shiny happy cotton and it's got cables through the middle and then the cable pattern down the side with bubbles in the center and the idea is that can lie this on the floor, baby can just kind of lie in the middle bit and maybe crawl about or explore with her hands the bubbles and the texture down the side. 
So that, yes, it is nice and warm. Um, and this I've called the rollover blanket. Let's just encourage the babies to roll over. And um, of course, it can go in the car, it can go in the pram, it can um, lie there in the cot. And there's so many different colours as well that you can knit this in. So I picked the turquoise to knit the sample for this. But we've got the orange, we've got the green, we've got greys. If you are going with the Pantone colours of the year and you want greys and yellows, then go for it. So that is the rollover blanket. And that is three and a half balls of yarn. And there's enough left over for the hat. So the hat matches the... Cables in the middle. There you go. It's almost like it is identical. It's exactly the same size as the cables in the middle. So that I loved. And I was completely shocked with myself. The first time decreasing with the cables actually worked. I didn't have to unpick it and start over. I've knitted hats like this before where I've gone, okay, now I need to reduce the cable size and reduce the top and um, make sure the crown is shaped evenly and make sure that it works and doesn't look really silly when you're finished but it worked really really well so i shocked myself and it i i feel quite proud of that i'm gonna sit here and boast i really love the top of that there you go so that's the hat that goes with it <laughs> so that's we can fit there you go that is the rollover baby blanket there you go so that is the exact kit that's sitting, sitting there. So the next one, I'm <laughs> rightly proud of that, Pat. Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, good morning, Heather. Thank you for joining us. Yes, Kim, it will be nice and warm. So Kaz watches Go Life Granny on Facebook. She does knitting. <laughs> I've never heard of Go Life Granny. That looks fabulous. Roll on Tuesday. Well, roll on Sunday because the kits go live and the patterns go live. So if you're not in the UK and you would like to join the knit along, then go and get the digital pattern and you're in. Um, and the knit along is right here, ready and waiting to be aired for the world. Um, Sharon... Thank you. Collar not making sense in my head. I will have a look after. Love the baby beanie and blanket. Yes. Turquoise is one of my favourite colours. Um, Kim, I don't think I've ever done a cable and decrease hat. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Joe, gosh, gosh, I'm missing it all after watching the replay. I know you are homeschooling at the same time. <laughs> Friday morning, end of the week, homeschooling and trying to watch Hannah on a live. <laughs> Right, so the knit along blanket is right here next to me. This also has stripes in it and it has a hat to go with it because yet again we have four balls of yarn with this, four different colours of yarn or indeed you could knit it with one, one colour if you feel like it um, and there's enough leftovers to knit a hat. So we have the beanie that goes with it. Sherry has just asked me if I knitted my sweater. I didn't make my sweater. I found this on eBay and I put the coloured bits in it. I decided to upgrade it. And it's got some purple bits down the side here. It actually needs a defuzz. But there you go. So I did the colour bits, I just saw it and thought, you're on, I'm having that. I was looking for a couple of jumpers this Christmas because mine, um, I've had them a few years and they're really starting to, because I wear them so much. I know so many, so many people around me have their heating on so high in the winter they don't actually wear jumpers. So they last for donkey's years. But I wear my jumpers every single day from about September to March. So they don't last as long as some might. 
she says, turning her electric heater off. But um, yeah, so I get cold and I wear my jumpers every single day <laughs> for at least six months. So I didn't make it, but I embellished it. Thank you. Right, so this is the um, knit along blanket. We have a stripy blanket. And it's a what you would call a corner to corner blanket. So we're knitting, we're casting on here, going through one colour, going through another colour, all the way out to the corners. And then we're going all the way up to the final corner at the top here. So there we go. There we are. These um, I have available in two colorways that I've chosen for you. So you don't have to sit there and go, I don't know what color I want. I don't know what color I want. Or you can go completely rogue and yes, pick whichever color you want. You can knit this in a single color, you can pick, knit this in two colors, but there you go. So this is the knit along blanket. If you want to join the knit along, you need to get the kit or the digital pattern. All of these blankets have got digital patterns, but it's the knit along blanket that gets you in the knit along. What we're going to do with the knit along is have full tutorials. To the two tutorials, the two main tutorials will actually be on YouTube for anybody to watch. But inside the knit along, you'll have mistakes tutorials. And we're going to do two live knit alongs as well that nobody else can come along to. Two live knit and natters like this, but they'll be private for everyone who's in the knit along. So if you want to join this, then the digital pattern will be open up on Sunday and the kit will be open on Sunday. And if you're on the um, membership, then you'll get a chance to pick your colours earlier. Um, just because membership knitters, I don't want you to miss out. Um, so that's one colourway that I've picked for you. And this is the other colourway that I've knitted, chosen for you. I, I love this pink. It's a mellow mauve. And my nieces wear this colour, and they've been wearing this colour for like three or four years. Every single year, they get a handbag in this colour, they get a, a furry jacket in this colour, or they have pens and pencil cases and things that are in this colour to go to school. And everything they want is this colour. It's like a really gorgeous, warm, rosy gold. They've got that with the green. It's a lovely dark grey at the end here. This is called Eagle Grey. And you and you can't really see it here on camera, but in some of the photos you can see it better. It's got a real green tint to it. So it goes really well with this green and with the pink. So there you go. So yes, so we start in the bottom corner. We increase out to the outsides and then we decrease up to the top there you go and that's where you cast off so what I actually really like about this is that you don't have to sit there and count have I got the right number of stitches when you're casting on you don't need many stitches when you're casting on because you're starting at a small point <laughs> so there you go now uh, the hat that goes with this one just shows you one thing for every ball of yarn you will never have the same amount of yarn on every single ball of yarn that first stripe is shorter than the others because there wasn't as much yarn on that ball of yarn um as there was on the orange yellow and gray one so that is just slightly shorter than the other stripes but it doesn't matter it looks like it's done on purpose and who's going to notice that's my kind of knitting so that goes with the kit um, knit along as well. Okay. Linda loves the stripy hat. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? To, to have something created from the leftovers, it's just my, just perfect. Make, bake and create who, um, I'm sorry, I can't remember your name. I'm trying to remember everyone's name when they've got <laughs> strange. Oh dear. I can't remember your name, sorry. She has just started secondary school. Okay, trying to finish homework. <laughs> Get on 
with it. <laughs> Kaz, love the colour blankets. Have you got patterns? Yes, the patterns will be there. The digital patterns um, will be there. Um, the digital patterns, there will be a really colourful one for you with lots of photographs in it. Um, with um, everything you need to join the knit along as well. And the digital pattern also comes with um, a printable one. So if you want one that's black and white, that hasn't got so much colour in it, so it's easy to print, then you can print that as well. So you can follow it from a hard copy, not just from a digital pattern. Sharon, this is going to be fun. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, that's right, Kim. You increase in the to the corners, side corners, and then you decrease to the top corner of the colours. Cool. Thank you. It's kind of which ones do I choose? Which ones do I choose? And I changed my mind my mind when I was knitting this. I thought, do I want that one colour? Do I want that colour? I actually changed my mind in the middle of knitting it. That's the way it goes. And I changed my mind knitting the orange and yellow one as well. But um, thankfully I had the opportunity to do that and it means now that you've got what I feel are really strong um, good colourways for the knit along kits so if you want the knit along kits in those colours then they're ready and waiting for you um, Izzy is just going oh okay, Bake Making Create is just going <laughs> Izzy's still here I hope Afternoon literature. Hi there. First time I've actually managed to get here. Very cool to see other knitters and crafters. Yeah, it's a great get together on a Friday morning. Lilac knitted a corner blanket but ended up longer at one end. Do you think if I washed it, it would return to a normal shape? This is something that happened when I was knitting these and I was going, what? But fold it, let it sit, and it will, it will be fine. It's because as you're knitting it, you've got so much more weight as you're knitting that final corner that it feels like it's stretching into a really weird shape. It wasn't. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. it everything is hunky-dory. Just um, finish it, cast off, fold it, and you'll realise that there's not a problem. Not at all. Um, do we get the beanie pattern too? Yes, Isabel, that comes with it. It's all part of it. Same with the um, rollover blanket. This is part of it. That comes with the digital pattern and the kit pattern as well. So, yeah, it's all there. It's all part of it. Hi there, Izzy. He's still here. <laughs> Izzy is still here. Fabulous. Right. I am going to just fold these out and I'll show you. Well, as I was knitting this, um, as I was knitting the first one, I was going, oh, no. That's something's gone wrong there. It's too too tall at the top. It's not right size at the top. But it's because there's more weight as you're knitting that last bit. And it feels it is stretching. It is stretching. But as soon as you put it back into place, fold it up, you'll realise that it's right. And count the number of rows at the end bit as on the cast on bit as well. And you'll realise you have the same number of rows. So yeah. Don't panic. Don't panic, Mr. Mannering. It's fine. I bet, I bet you did it perfectly. But you did just it just it looks it looks scary at that top corner. Because uh, it doesn't look like it's the right shape. There you go. So there you go. That is Aaron Worsted Weight Cotton from Wool and the Gang. It's the shiny happy cotton. So if you are in a far flung place in the world and you want to join us, then um, if you want the kit, get in touch privately, because, I mean, I've already sent one of these kits off um, to Canada. I, we were just, she's in the membership, and I said to her, just get in touch. If you want the kit to join the knit along, we need to send it off earlier. So if you want to do that as well, then do get in touch, fill in the contact form on the website, I mean, while we are smaller, we can do that. But as soon as the business gets bigger, it might it will be more difficult. So we will just have everybody can get it and we'll probably be posting all around the world by then. We've not been posting around the world, A, because of COVID and B, because of Brexit. So it just has made customs more complicated. It's made postal times unpredictable. So um, if you want it, we need to post it 
as soon as possible. But if you want to get the yarn yourself, if you've got even got some in your stash, then go for it and you can get the digital pattern and you will be joining the knit along whether you've got the kit or whether you've got the pattern. And the, the knit along starts on the 1st of March and the knitting tutorial will go live on YouTube on the 2nd of March. But if you're part of the knit along, you get it sooner. So that is what's exciting about the next few weeks. I'm going to be talking about baby knitting again over the next few weeks. We've got the whole major kit reveal on Tuesday next week. I'll show you how I pack up the kits, all sorts of stuff about what's inside it um, on Tuesday next week. I'll be talking about what and how all of the tips I've got about knitting with cotton on the following week. And then we'll go through the tutorials. And like I said, if you're part of the knit along, you've got all of the mistakes videos and the knit along um, means you get into the exclusive knit and natters as well. So just like this. Um, and it won't be on YouTube. It will be on a different platform so that you can come on video and show me your different colorways. Ask me questions. Show me how you're getting on. Show everyone how you're getting on. So we can all see each other on video if you want to come on video. It's not at all. Are compulsory you can sit there in the chat just like you do here um so yes that's the knit along and those are all the blankets um so yeah isn't this exciting so they were all going live in the shop on sunday there you go there's the per turquoise one as well and then the two knit alongs blankets too so i could have some more tea i just wondered if you've got any more questions because we did some fabulous Q and A's at the end of last week's um, uh, chat live lockdown. Actually, um, how are you getting on with lockdown? I know some of you aren't in the UK, but those of you who are, how do you feel you're getting on? Are you are you managing okay? It's five six weeks in now. Um, kind of feel like there's more hope on the horizon with do everyone doing so well with the vaccinations, but. I know we're unusual in the UK in the fact that we've got 15 million people now vaccinated. I think that's the highest number across the um, countries in the world. Not sure how the US is doing. We haven't, I actually haven't heard about that, but how are you feeling? Is the knitting helping? Because I feel that knitting's helping. Isabel, yes, the Knit Along Blanket goes on sale this weekend. It does. And you will get an email earlier than that, Isabel. So you can get hold of it before this weekend. It will mean that I'm packing it up and it will be going before everyone else's is going. Afternoon literature. Haven't been able to come to these. Oh, as your teacher. Hi there. So we've been doing live lessons at half term break next week. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. And in some ways, I should imagine that's kind of kept you going. It's one week after another week after another week. I find when I've when I've been ill in the past, it's kind of it's having the distraction and it's having the points in the week that I can look forward to that just keep me going. Knitting seems to be the only thing getting me through. Yeah, it's the break. It's the me time. Yeah, definitely. Hi, Sarah. Izzy, the lockdown seems to be harder slog than the others. But I keep reminding myself there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, lockdown. I know a lot of people have said that to me. The lockdown seems like a harder slog. Um, in my experience, if I've gone through something before, if I've experienced something before, like um, pain or when I was bed bound, um, I felt like I have had that same experience again. It felt easier because I knew that I'd got through it before. So I got through 12 weeks of not leaving the house last year. So I'm sitting here thinking, it's only six weeks, I'm doing okay. Um, so I know we all think about things in different ways, but I I really do hope that you can kind of contemplate that as well. It's like we've been through this before and we managed it. It's difficult because it's dark. I know January can be really difficult because it's cold, it's grey, it's dark. Um, actually, I was sitting there yesterday thinking, crikey, it's quarter past five, it's actually quite light. So in that respect, I was thinking, this is quite nice. <laughs> but yes, last year, 
it was quite warm, it wasn't raining every day, it wasn't snowing, um, I could sit in the garden. So it just, it did feel different, most definitely. Linda, where we live, we've hardly noticed we both work from home, so there's no difference. Um, only missing family and friends. Yeah, I want to hug my parents. I haven't seen them. That's a difficult thing, especially as they're like five minutes around the corner. Knitting is giving me a focus where I'm feeling a bit blah. Yeah. I'm not sure why Sarah's clapping, but yes. Mandela, happy and healthy. Yes, brilliant. Crafting more than usual. That's really, really helpful, isn't it? Jack Jane was vaccinated. Yes. Knitting has been keeping me sane as I have my daily walks. Yeah, yeah. Kim hasn't been anywhere apart from doctors, etc. since March. Couldn't be out with knitting crafting. Yeah, yeah. Sarah, just had counselling this morning and talked about my knitting so much and how it helps. It's astonishing, isn't it? Um, it just gets you through and you notice the, um, the moments and the accumulation of achievement. It's just, actually, I've done five, ten. 15 more centimetres today. Look at that. I'm getting near it. I'm getting through it. it. It's helping. Afternoon literature says, I always knit, but I've taught myself lots of new things and treated myself to new needles and yarn. Knitting my first sock. I've been using videos for lots of new advice. Oh, that is cool. First sock. Congratulations. You need a round of applause. Well done. Joe, borderline recluse here. <laughs> I don't have to leave the house. <laughs> That's an interesting point, isn't it? Um, Nick and I actually don't have to leave the house. We um, have been with the food delivery company that we use for so many years. They just said to us at the beginning, keep ordering your shopping and we're fine. So last March, when my mum even was going, I'm ringing up everybody and we're looking for a food delivery slot. And I was saying, huh, I'm just doing it. And it's still coming. So. In that respect, I feel very lucky. Um, Nick hasn't got to go out and get shopping every week and go to the food supermarket and just stand there in a queue. It was awful last time, wasn't it? it the, trying to get organised and trying to understand how it all worked. The um, supermarket's finding it difficult. Sarah, being creative is a gift. It certainly is. Um, it's something that spreads through your life it's it's like a meditation it just I used to be able to craft I'd have the radio on I'd have Simon Mayo in the afternoon on Radio 5 <laughs> that shows you how long ago it was but um this is before I got married and I remember I'd sit there with a really lovely big desk and I would craft it didn't really matter what it was, but I would just make stuff. Sometimes the sewing machine would be on the table. Sometimes I'd be painting and I'd be even painting on fabric. And it would just, the hours would go by and suddenly it was Steve Wright talking. And hang on a second, Simon Mayo's finished. It's like two, three hours gone and that's it. Wow. How did that happen? And it, it is, it's a distraction, but it's so calming to feel that the mind has just um just kind of gone into a space um where nothing is really worrying you so I, I really 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 love that creativity is a gift heather knitting is helping i love this friday morning video chat as a high point two days that are all too planned it's, it's certainly a highlight in my life as well i must say heather thank you so much everyone for joining us izzy that's it the weather hasn't helped Spring is on the way and the vaccination rollout is going so well, it is. And Kim can't wait for spring and summer. I keep looking out in the garden going, please tell me the snowdrops are on their way. Please tell me the plum tree is starting to blossom. It's really late this year. Jackie's in the UK as well. Truthful struggling as I've been in lockdown nearly 12 months now. But knitting and other crafts are the kit me my going. Missing all my friends, this channel is a godsend. Oh, I'm so pleased to hear that, Jackie. Oh dear. Yeah, it's locked down nearly 12 months. It feels like that, doesn't it? Because no matter what the rules were, I'm doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, Sarah is knitting the beret. I'm so glad we sorted that pattern out. It's one of the patterns on Ravelry that I'm a flaw. I'm not flawless. I make mistakes. One of the patterns on, ra on my Ravelry shop, for some reason, the rows were in the wrong order. So Sarah emailed me and said, which bit am I supposed to be doing first? 
And I felt so bad because I had it sitting there in the right order, in the right way, in my computer, in my computer sat there. And for some reason, it was a wrong way around. The, the, um, the formatting in the Ravelry pattern was incorrect. Just bizarre. So, so that was, in, yes, it was, it was funny. <laughs> but yeah, it, it does. I do feel awful because some people wouldn't have emailed, and they would go, "Oh, Hannah's dreadful. Oh, how could she? How could she possibly put a uh, uh, pattern up there like that? I'm never speaking to her again." Um, but, but yeah, if you ever find a pattern that's got a mistake in it, just let me know because I obviously haven't done it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Linda agrees with Jackie. This channel is a real help. I wish I'd found it sooner. Well, I'm glad you're here now. I really am. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here. Izzy, my mum used to say that her knitting was part of her daily meditation. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and Linda, being a Christian helps. Knowing God is in control. I don't need to worry. I only trust him. Yeah, having faith can really help guide you through this kind of thing, definitely. Um, Sarah gave me something to think about and <laughs> now it looks fabulous. Yes, 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 yes. Kim, looking forward to the chat on Fridays. Yeah, you can share a picture. Sarah, if you go to Facebook, um, then Fridays and Mondays, I have posts that say, what have you knitted this week and what's on your needles? So share, that's it. Um, and the, um, Let me think. The other way you can do it is share on Instagram and use at knit with Hannah if you're there. So, and by all means, send me an email if you want to. What is my Ravelry account? Look up knit with Hannah and you'll find me. Um, the patterns on there, I haven't updated them, and you will probably find one of these blankets on there as well because, like I said, it's an old pattern, but I've updated them here. So if you want one of those one one of these blanket patterns, don't go and buy them on Ravelry. <laughs> Wait until Sunday because you'll get a much better um, format of them there. And like I said, even the bobbles I've updated. I've been working out how to knit them. Carol's here. Hi there, Carol. Or shall I call you Lupin? <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, so they are definitely. Um, I'm also on there as Hannah Designs, I think, because that's what I called myself years ago when I wasn't really sure whether I wanted to do knitting or paper crafting or goodness knows what. So, um, yeah, go and have a look at those patterns if you want to. The, the patterns on there that I really, really like, so many of the yarns, aren't available anymore which isn't which is why I don't promote Ravelry in a big way so it's kind of it's there but it's a real shame that the yarns that I picked just kind of were there and then they disappeared bef before your eyes just unfortunate but the yarns uh, this is why purposefully I am going which are the big yarn manufacturers that I can trust how can I actually talk to them about their yarns and I want to talk to them about yarns that are not going away anytime soon. So these are the yarns that I've picked for these patterns because they're likely to be here for a very long time. So for ever in a day, you are likely to be able to pick the get patterns and the kits and use those patterns for a uh, day after day after year after year. So um, that is one thing that I really want to make a point of. A lot of the Ravelry patterns you cannot get the yarns for. Sarah has just emailed me. Da -da, da -da, da -da. Oh, fabulous. You're getting on all right with that. Brilliant. Oh, it's a lovely tweedy yarn as well. Lovely. It's a lovely colour. It's like the um like the turquoise hat and a blanket. Lovely. Brilliant. Um, so also I will just put in a couple of the links that we've talked about here today. If you want to be part of the, um, membership, 
then it's nickwithhandle.co.uk forward slash invite. And if you want to have a look at the courses that we've discussed today as well, then you need the academy.nickwithhandle.co.uk. There you go. That has got all sorts of courses in it. And circle skills is the one that you need to look for in there. You just put circle hyphen skills at the end of that and you'll probably find it. Um, so that is in there as well. Is the wall and the hang young DK or chunky? I'm not sure what you're talking about, Joe. Will you share the link for my collar help? Um, let me see. I'll quickly see if I can find it, but it's a playlist, so it might be a bit more complicated. Um, it's, um, I've got so many playlists now because I'm making playlists, secret playlists for um, all of the different for all of the different I need to copy the link there you go all of the different um, kits because the kits have got playlists that go with them there you go is the wall and the hanging on DK or chunky um, find I mean wool in the gang oh <laughs> The new kits yarn is Aaron worsted weight, so we're knitting with five and a half millimeter needles. Sharon, share the link for the collar. Yes. Okay, so that should be okay. That should be the playlist that you need. Izzy, definitely go and look at those links. Cool. Yeah, the new kits is Aaron worsted weight yarn. It's a medium weight. We use five and a half millimeter needles. So it's just gone an hour, so I really should go. But there was something. Um, that was mentioned quite a bit this week in quite a few comments and it was talking about wrist pain when holding needles and when knitting so I we've already mentioned it right at the beginning um, I do have the yoga for wrist pain and of course go and see a doctor if it does get that bad because you're knitting reduce the amount of time you're knitting do shorter um, points shorter periods of knitting rather than one long, do lots of 10 minute bouts of knitting instead. Um, do the wrist pain yoga class that's in my um, yoga classes. That's another playlist. <laughs> See if I can find that quickly. Um, and I did find yesterday um, a yoga class about wrist pain that I really liked. Um, let's see if I can find. Copy link address. That is the yoga class on my channel for wrist and hand pain. Um, but there are different ways of holding the needles as well. So I know many of you will have watched the different styles of knitting, which is how you hold your needles in your yarn. So that's one thing to look at. Um, I've looked at so many different options and the way that I hold my needles I think I was just very fortunate when I started to knit when I was taught by my mum when I was watching people around me I was taught the English method that's it that's it that's it I just use my right hand mainly and I don't flick the wrist or anything like that so the one thing that I've been looking at is actually more different methods of holding the yarn. So Icelandic and Norwegian, where you have the yarn on your finger and you basically, it, there's this tiny flick wrist movement in the left hand, it's minuscule, but it was enough for me to go, ouch, I don't want to do that. I did try it for a little while, but as soon as I realised that it was that flicking movement in the left, it's a very, very small movement, but because it's a very small movement, it was it felt more painful than if it was probably a larger movement so it's really difficult if you are having pain look at different options on how you knit and obviously go and see a medical professional as well 
I used the yoga video and I found a yoga video yesterday that I really enjoyed as well by Kat Nethan. Um, you want to go and have a find her on YouTube as well. So it's just a wrist video that she did. I actually found that really helpful. It was just about strengthening the wrists as well as um, giving them a break and stretching them. So Joe has fine yarn in the stash. Just wanted to double up for the balls for a tweedy look. You may be able to you see knitting something like this is not dependent on size. So it is a interesting thing. You need to get the right size needles with the yarn that you're knitting with. So it could be really tight or it could be really loose. And you need to not be really stuck in, I have to have it the right size when I finish knitting it. It may look like it looks longer and perhaps not quite as wide. Um, and Or it looks really wide, but it's not quite as long. Because of the gauge, you know, you can never find the right gauge if you're changing one thing or the other. So just be aware of that. And don't get hung up on it if it doesn't quite work. Um, so if I were you, I'd try and get hold of the original yarn if you can. Vintage four ply against DK. Did you follow that up from last live? If so, where would you be? I haven't had time to look at that yet. It's it's a really it's a complicated question. I'm going to have to, if you want me to explore it and. Um, try and what's the word um research it more then i will have to spend more time on it um but you can knit up gauges gauge swatches i if i were you i would knit up try and find out which needles are best for it and you will get a really good idea of whether it is similar to other DKs because of how many stitches you get for 10 centimetres, how many rows you get for 10, 10 centimetres. It's, um, it's a really difficult, kind of complicated <laughs> conversation. Four ply is generally not DK. DK was originally eight ply. That's how it was set out. So um, if we're talking a real vintage four ply, it could even be thinner, it could even be thicker. So it's, it, it is really difficult. Um, even nowadays, you will get a full ply yarn from five different manufacturers and they will all be different. And you can bet that was exactly the same thing if you got a ball of yarn in the 1920s, that they would not all be the same. So it's a really difficult thing. <laughs> oh dear. Jo was trying to find a way to use her yarn up. I love that. I love that. Yes, you want to try and use your yarn up, but um, I bet you'll find a pattern that will work with it. Or you'll just put stitches on your needles and you start knitting. Because I know you do that sometimes. Uh, okay, so I'm going to... Gonna, that's an interesting word. I'm going to say goodbye. <laughs> Oh, Heather says, next week my sister who lives in Canada will be joining us. I live in Northeast USA, Global Knitting Connections. Well, hey, yes. Um, yes, thanks, Kim, for being here as well. Um, I will get emails out to you all this weekend when the kits go live. And like I said before, if you're in the membership, I'll get emails out to you before then so we can get your kits out earlier and make sure you don't run out of yarn. <laughs> right. Don't worry, Carol, you can watch the replay. You can definitely watch the replay. It's here. Boom, boom. Right. They say four ply or DK, and like you said, I was thinking eight against four ply. Yeah, it's still, it's difficult. If you want to test it, then knit a small swatch up. So you put 30 stitches on your needles and knit 30 rows and see what size it ends up. It could end up just fine. And it could be a pattern that goes, hey, can't be bothered. So just knit with what you got. Oh, dear. Right. Yes. I enjoyed it too. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed looking at all the new blankets. Like I said, we'll have a, a, a real nice deep dive into all of the components of the kits on Tuesday. And the knit along starts on the 1st of March. And the kits will be in the shop on Sunday. Oh dear. Exciting stuff. 
I will see you all soon. Thanks so much for joining me this morning. Bye for now. Happy knitting.